The Master of Dreams slashes his way through the Mego doll line. Here's a look at the new Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, Mego doll. Marty Abrams, aka the father of the action figure, has relaunched these figures in response to overwhelming demand. Mego Corporation was started by his father, David Abrams, in 1954 and named by his younger brother, Howard, who would say, Me Go Too. Howard later became head of sales for the company. The Mego Corporation sold over 20 million of its now standard 8 inch action figures worldwide, and Mego Corporation is proud to take over that fine heritage today. Of course, you know, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the Mego Freddy stands. Now, the packaging does tout this as being a figure that's 8 inches in height, but you know me, I still like to use the Ultra Measuretron 5000 whenever I get the chance. According to the Ultra Measuretron, the figure stands 8 inches in height. Centimeters yells somebody from the back of the crowd to the answering of the mob. You're looking at a figure that stands 20.3 centimeters tall. Okay, so the figure doesn't really come with a lot. It comes with its fedora, and that's about it. That is actually, that's all it comes included with. Fedora is a nice, rather nice representation of the fedora that Freddy Krueger would wear in the movies. A little on the shiny side. I sort of wish that the paint wasn't as glossy as what it is. It's made up of a plastic, although the plastic is not very forgiving. It's not very pliable. It does have a peg on the underside making me think curiously at one point that perhaps Freddy would have had a hole in his head, maybe something that they abandoned later on. That's about the only reasoning why I could gather that there's a peg, a very noticeable peg on the underside. It is sort of playing a guessing game as to which way the hat goes. When I put it on initially, I think, okay, that's not quite sitting just right. I flip the hat around and it's about the same. So either way, it doesn't really seem like the hat stays in place. Pressing it down as much as you can, getting the strength of hair, it just does not stay in place. It sort of just sits on top of his head. I feel like the head is maybe just a little bit bigger than the interior rim of the head, of the hat. So again, when you put it in place, it sort of just sits on there. You wouldn't be able to tip this upside down because if you did, <laughs> well played. I was gonna say that the hat should stay, the hat would fall off, it would not stay on. Oh, universe, you tempt me so. So it does come with the hat. Kind of wish that he could have come with something a little bit else, but as it is, c'est la vie, he does come include with the hat. Okay, so as for the figure itself, pretty interesting to see a spin-off line, of, well, the new Mego lineup of 8-inch tall figures. You know, to their credit, I have to say, first and foremost, the figure is very poseable. Sports a topping 14 points of articulation. We'll talk all about that in a second. First things first, of course, we're going to look at its head. That's usually where the good place to start, and then we'll kind of work our way down. Proportionately, I guess you could say that the head is a little bit bigger than the rest of the figure's body. It probably could have been smaller, just a little bit, just a little bit smaller. But, uh, you know, despite for the fact that it's got a very large melon sitting on very small shoulders, it's not a really, not that bad of a head sculpt, all things considered. The head, as most Mego figures go, tends to be a little on the squishy side. I mean, th there is no escaping air hole that I can see, but it does have a squishy head nonetheless. Facial expression, or the face sculpt, is actually pretty good. The paint, I can't help but the way that the paint's been applied to the figure, makes me think that the figure's head sculpt is made out of a brittle, brittle like porcelain. It's just the way, it, it's sort of a dry application. There's no real slick, wet look to it. Kind of wish that the darker colors on the face were a little bit more darker to contrast, just because you, it, it seems like it's such a, just a blended in contrast, blended in series of colors put together. For all the sheen that they put into the hat, kind of wish that they could have also equally put some sheen, some extra sheen on Michael, Meyer, on Michael Myers, on Freddy Krueger's head sculpt here. But again, I'm really happy with the head sculpt. I think it's pretty good. Overall, it's pretty good. It does look like Freddy Krueger, be it again that the head sculpt is a little on the big side. The expression actually kind of reminds me of New Nightmare Freddy. 
just the way he's looking at you. I guess it would be hard to pinpoint specifically, well, what is it about him that's looking at you that reminds you of one specific movie? I don't know. Just call me crazy. It's just the way it's he's looking. He's, he's looking right at you. Reminds me of the new Nightmare Freddy. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the head sculpt. I feel like the paint somehow could be a little bit darker. Maybe that's that's where the detractor is. And certainly a little bit of slicked sheen, some of which that has made, probably could take in a little bit off the hat and add a little bit to his face, just to kind of give him a little bit more of a slicked, wet look. Then we move our way further down, viewers, viewing audience, to his sweater. And very apparently aware, most of you should be, that his, his sweater is a very much... Not quite red, but instead pink. Not really sure what's happened here, but both the green and the red are our very light, light shades. Both of them are. That the end result here is a pink sweater with green stripes. I'm really sure what happened here. Maybe it missed a second paint wash. I don't know, a second staining. I suppose you could probably go in there with fabric markers, just sort of fill that in, darken that a bit. I don't want to say that this figure doesn't, that needs necessarily customization, but maybe going in, I would probably have just add a little bit, like I said, darker coloring to the face, and certainly a lot darker staining to the reds and the and the greens. Being very apparently pink is a, definitely a detractor for this particular figure. Uh, they have scarred up his hands, but as you can see, the hands aren't. They don't finish that far up onto the figure. They stop right where the hands peg into place and attach to standard Mego bodies. The same thing can also be said for the glove, which unfortunately does have very, very apparent uh, warping to the blades. This could easily be remedied by just simply heating up the blades, warping them back into place and cooling them off. It's really only this blade right here, well, maybe these two blades that are the culprits, making an otherwise decent enough glove uh, seem a little bit more warped. It's just unfortunately that that's the case. There's the under hand, the under palm. Being that he also does have as much posability as he does, you can do a little bit more to him than you would, say, a retro cloth figure. Again, we'll talk about that later. As we look at his pants, very apparently also, there's a whole bunch of this extra paint that's been added to the, to the actual pant legs here. I would imagine it's deliberate. I can't imagine why this would just be a factory defect that they probably just wanted to add a little bit of wear and tear to his pants here. Overall, again, decent, decent looking Freddy Krueger, if not for the fact he does have a few of those little hiccups, all of which we've already talked about. It's positive, certainly, is the fact that he does have very poseable body. I mean, even if you lift him up, this is not as muscular as Freddy Krueger would normally have been, but he does have all the component pieces that a, a standard Mego body would have, right down to the elastic strapping that keeps the legs, the arms, and everything else together. This causes a figure not only to be 14 points of articulation, but also a figure that you can do a lot more with than, say, even some of the stuff that NECA was producing. One of the best things that I, the praises I could certainly make to this, this figure as a whole is the fact that its feet are what looks to be ball joints. Maybe there is a hinge joint in there, but at the very least, the feet do sit flat and uh, you can move them. You can't seem to twist them, so, which leads me to think that it's actually a hinge joint rather than a ball joint. But at the very least, it doesn't have the problem with angled feet that the retro cloth figures have from NECA toys. Let's have a look at all this guy's posability uh, for his head. It rotates all the way around. It doesn't appear to be so much a ball joint as it's just the head's been pegged into place. A simple swap out and fix, I'm sure if you wanted to change the heads out, I don't know why you would want to. Uh, the arms rotate technically all the way around. I mean, of course, there's the stopping point where a lot of the fabric will just sort of bunch up around the shoulder area. The arms also hinge out. Uh, the one problem with the arms hinging out, though, is oftentimes, you can see that right there, the arm wants to unpeg from the socket. And simply just a case where, uh, you can see it right there, I'll have to re-loop the, the arm back into the socket. Uh, this again, I think this particular arm right here, this one's not so bad at all. It hinges out back and forth, does bend at the elbow, and does rotate at the hand. This particular arm, however, right from the moment I got it out of the packaging, let me just show you what's happened here, it looks like it has come loose. Well, it's not even so much loose. There's a hook right there that hooks the arm into place. So I just have to 
pull it out so you can see right there that's how everything sort of comes together there's the elastic that loops around one end sort of looks like a paper clip and the other loop goes around the arm so I'm just gonna have to pull it up pop it literally back into the socket and pop it back into place and it shouldn't give me too many more problems so as you can see now it moves perfectly fine so this may be something you may want to be aware of this arm isn't so much the problem I just noticed that this arm repeatedly popped out of the socket when I was playing around with this guy. So he does have the upper torso ball joint, that's nice. A pleasant surprise is certainly has the waist hinges or the leg hinges, again, all of which working on those that elastic. He's got single hinge on the knee, and even though, again, it looks like it's only just a straight out hinge, he seems to have a lot more forgiving posability, again, than, say, the likes of a NECA a NECA rec retro cloth figure, which we of course have looked at on this channel. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the Freddy. He has some problems, very apparent problems, of course, being the larger head and this stained sweater. The sweater probably being the biggest detractor for it, but it sort of has like a vintage vibe to it. Mego may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for the ones that have collected Mego over the years, much like me, are thrilled for the fact that the company's coming back and producing figures like this. Freddy Krueger could very well sit on your shelf with all the other Freddy Kruegers you have in your collection, and uh, he just has a splendor to him. Like I said, a bit of a charm. Sort of got has that vintage charm, something like you would have wished this figure could have existed back in the day when Mego was first circulating stores. Collecting Migos as a kid, I sort of knew what to expect when I picked up Freddy Krueger here. Uh, sort of an updated character with still that those vintage traits that I like so much with the Mego brand. There are, of course, a few hiccups here with Freddy Krueger. Overall, the head sculpt is really good. It's just that the head seems really big and planted on a smaller body. If you can overlook that, and for the fact that the sweater obviously doesn't have the more trademark colors that Freddy Krueger would be normally known for, it's still a decent enough looking figure. I'm sure customizers would want to pick this up for themselves and go in and tweak the colors to the sweater. Maybe add some additional paint to the head sculpt and maybe tweak the colors to the glove just to give them a more updated, more movie accurate look. But again, I think what misses its mark on this particular figure is sort of the charm and the appeal of Mego to start off with. When I collected Migos as a kid, really none of the figures looked identical to their comic counterparts. Often at times you sort of had to suspend disbelief. And in the suspension of disbelief is where your imagination took flight. Freddy Krueger is still, again, a snapshot, if you will, of what Mego was back in the day. I'm certainly really glad now that they're starting to resurface and give us brand new figures. Again, these may, may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I have to admit, if you pick these ones up for yourself, you might find equal similar charm to these, as I did in this review. Some good news, though, is if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, a lot of the Mego brand is hitting store shelves, comic book sh store shelves as well. Unfortunately, here in Canada, not so much. I had to source this guy out online, but I'm so glad I did. I sort of have now a Freddy Krueger that could have existed back in the day. I just happen to have picked him up right now. Again, today's review, we were having a look at the new Mego. This was the 8-inch Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger Mego doll or action figure. Some people call it dolls. I would consider this an action figure or really just a doll. I mean, you could call it either or. Calling it a doll, I don't think, detracts anything from the fact that Mego back in the day was producing Mego action dolls, action figure dolls. Either way, however you slice it, again, a fun looking Freddy Krueger. Make sure as well, guys, you hit that little subscribe button down below. You can probably see it right now. It's right there. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. You're pointing at it. Yeah, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Certainly more videos will be coming your way. Maybe we'll have a look at some more Mego brand dolls action figures as well. Stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, muchachos. I'll see you next time.